I will speak uh, English and I will uh, try to show you uh, what is ACL plus something. And uh, sometimes when you have some uh, chronic ACL or medial meniscectomy, long-term medial meniscectomy, you can have some cartilage damages or in case of re-rupture, you have to uh, ask you some questions and maybe do more than an ACL. So the question is why? Why you had uh, ACL rupture, for example, or how is your cartilage if you have a chronic or an ACL plus an old meniscectomy? The second question is, is an ACL would be sufficient or should you do something else when you will do your graft? And this question is definitely true. For example, this uh, 24 years old uh, girl had an ACL graft in 2014 and she, when she went back to sports, eight months after, she re-ruptured the ACL. So if you look at the physical exam, it's uh, pretty normal ex ex except the ACL. And you, su you do some x-rays and the x-rays is very, it's very, very important. You, you will uh, look at monopodal wake bearing x-rays with uh, a perfect alignment of both condyles and uh, you will see where the tunnels were. Um, for example, this one was too vertical. On the sagittal, you will see that it was too anterior. But also, if you do some stress x-rays, you will quantify the amount of laxity. And it's very important to quantify the amount of laxity. But if you go further, and if you look at the tibia, you will uh, be able to measure on the monopodal wake bearing x-rays, the tibial slope, and the slope is so important. The normal value is seven, and uh, if you look at this girl, she is 14, twice the normal value. The static anterior tibial translation is something like 10 millimeters. So it means that when she's walking, she will put 10 millimeters strain on her graft. And maybe this is the cause of the uh, uh, early rupture. There is no joint line narrowing. So the stress on the graft due to the high tibial slope leads to a, a graft failure by fatigue. It's a stress uh, rupture. So <coughs> the reason for the failures are, of course, uh, extrinsic like a technical failures, the surgeons, sports, muscles, etc. But we will look at the intrinsic factors. And this is so important. The AP translation, the rotational laxity, the tibial slope, the notch, the gender, the hyperlaxity. So look at those uh, factors. And I will focus this topic on uh, tibial slope and the alignment, because I will speak about uh, osteotomies. So the pre-op screening, as you have seen, is so important. You will uh, use a clinical uh, evaluation, the standard x-rays, the laximetry, the slice imaging, like the CT or MRI, and you have seen that this morning. You will quantify the anterior-posterior laxity, the rotational laxity, and the meniscus status, the bone stock and the cartilage, for sure. So when you have that, you will be able to start and uh, what are you looking at when you do some x-rays? First, the location of the hardware, the tunnel positioning, and uh, you will be able to know exactly if uh, uh, there are some reason for failures, and what you will uh, manage and how you will plan your revision case. If you have um, uh, some uh, chronic ACL or if you have some uh, meniscectomy, medial meniscectomy or lateral meniscectomy, in the antecedent of the patient, you will look at the joint line narrowing. And it's very important to use the shoes view. It means that it's a wake bearing inflection. You will check the, uh, the amount of uh, uh, joint line. And you can see that on the uh, AP view, but also on the sagittal. It's very, you, you can also see that on the sagittal view. It's very important. You quantify the, uh, the slope and the normal value is seven, and you quantify also the anterior tibial translation while the patient is walking. And this is a very important uh, um, part of your screening. So this will uh, lead you maybe to do some associate procedures and adapt the post-op program. 
The MRI evaluation is also important because it will give you the meniscus uh, status. It will uh, show you the, the soft tissue uh, tibial slope, which is uh, also important. And you can also quantify the amount of translation of your knee. So uh, you uh, will uh, know exactly if you need to uh, adapt and to do some uh, meniscus uh, surgery um, more. So the ACL uh, reconstruction, of course, you look at the graft choice, etc. But I will look specifically to the associate procedures and especially about osteotomies. So should we add some uh, other procedures to ACL? Sometimes, yes. And uh, I would say probably, certainly. Don't forget that. So, managing, uh, ma 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 how to manage the malalignment? You have the malalignment in the uh, AP uh, view and the sagittal. And both are important and both uh, might be uh, corrected. If you look to the axial malalignment, you need to have uh, long-standing x-rays to quantify the, uh, the, um, the, the varus deformity or the valgus deformity. You can uh, look on the uh, AP uh, uh, view, uh, on the shoes view, the joint line narrowing. You see also uh, if you have some osteophyte uh, on the notch. And it's also very important to look at the patient walking in your office because you will see if he has an asymmetric varus deformity and you will also see if he has a varus thrust uh, when he's walking. And this is uh, something important to quantify. So in case of uh, ACL plus arthritis, if you look at the literature, you will see that definitely when you have a chronic ACL, you have more chance of having an osteoarthritis. If um, you do uh, an isolated ACL on a patient with uh, an ACL rupture, you will increase the risk of arthritis. So your surgery will maybe correct the laxity, but it will probably increase arthritis. If you um, look at the uh, patient who will have a, a, rec um, a revision uh, ACL reconstruction, more of, most of them have a, a various deformity above the normal. So it means that uh, osteotomy might be a, a, a good way to prevent uh, the, uh, the evolution of your uh, arthritis. So all those uh, uh, articles uh, are very important to uh, highlight the fact that sometimes you need to correct the axial alignment. So when you speak about HTO, uh, you can do an opening wedge osteotomy, of course. Uh, there is no fibular osteotomy, you no risk for the nerve. Uh, you can be very precise, but uh, you, uh, you have a higher risk of malunion if you uh, <coughs> do a high correction and be careful to the slope because you can increase the slope and <coughs> it is definitely bad for your ACL. If you do a closing wedge osteotomy, it's uh, uh, a little bit uh, uh, more difficult uh, in terms of the nerve risk, but you can correct a large amount of uh, deformity and uh, you uh, will uh, be able also to reduce the tibial slope, which is important. So the, AC, uh, the, the literature in uh, ACL definitely says, yes, it's a good option to add uh, an HTO to your ACL. So uh, this is uh, something that you can um, think about. What about the indication and uh, the surgical choice? The question, the most important question is, you have more pain or instability, or you have pain and instability. If you have only pain, do only an osteotomy and do not do any ACL. If you have an instability and pain, you can uh, address your patient to do an osteotomy plus an ACL to reduce the instability to protect the graft, in fact. So these are the options in terms of um, of uh, uh, osteotomy. Which osteotomy uh, to uh, use? Probably if you have a high deformity, if you have a, a big slope, uh, the closing wedge osteotomy is probably better. If you have a small deformity, uh, uh, no risk of uh, uh, increasing the slope, uh, the opening wedge osteotomy is uh, probably the best, even to uh, be back to sports activities. About the sagittal alignment, uh, it uh, includes the tibial slope, 
you have to measure it. Uh, the static anti-arterial translation, which means that you put some stress on your graph, and uh, the meniscus status is also very important. You look at that. When uh, you uh, walk, you have some shear forces in monopodal stance, and um, this will increase the tension in your ACL and in your graft. So be careful uh, about that, be sensible to that, measure it on x-rays, and you can also measure it uh, on uh, MRI. The posterior tibial slope is definitely uh, uh, a, a big uh, intrinsic factor which increase the pivot shift, which uh, increase the Lachman test, and uh, which um, could be maybe corrected to prevent and to protect the, your graft, especially in case of uh, revision. You have to know that this uh, surgery has been uh, described uh, by, by the vet and uh, in fact uh, when uh, you have a dog, the dog uh, is not playing soccer but is running fast, he has a very uh, high tibial slope and he, he rupture, he, he, he do a, a, a fatigue rupture, a stress rupture of, AC, of uh, his uh, ACL. And the main surgery to uh, do in dogs is to do a deflection osteotomy with no ACL. And it works absolutely perfectly. So this is a surgery which has been described by Henri de Jour in uh, 1991. And um, we did that uh, publication at that time. And the indication was the second ACL reconstruction failure with a tibial slope higher than 12 degrees. This was the, 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 the cutoff. So when you do such a surgery, you have to expose the patella tendon. Uh, and the osteotomy will be done below, but behind the patella tendon. So you have to detach the deep MCL and you have to go very far on the posterior part of your uh, MCL. You will do the same on the, uh, on the lateral side and you will detach the jerdy and you have to go very far also to the posterior part to uh, release the, um, the fascia lata. You will get no medial or lateral laxity, definitely. While you have done that, you will be able to expose the patellar tendon and, uh, and um, define the amount of correction you want. We say about one millimeter for one degree. This is what um, we are doing. It's a closing wedge uh, uh, os osteotomy. Then you put some uh, key wires uh, and you have to use, uh, of course, the fluoroscopy to see exactly where you are going to. Uh, you go to the posterior part exactly at that uh, point and then with the saw you will do the cut and um, uh, uh, it's not an easy surgery. Definitely it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult and you have to go carefully and you have to use the fluoroscopy uh, every time. Then uh, you will do the second cut, uh, one, one degree is one millimeter, you check on your x-ray and then you will be able to remove the wedge and close uh, the, uh, the uh, osteotomy as uh, you see. So you go slowly, you see that uh, you are able to move the super part of your tibia and to remove the wedge and uh, sometimes it's not so easy. For the video it was really nice, really nice. I was so happy. So uh, when you have done that you will be able to close the osteotomy and um, to, uh, to fix it. So you see that uh, you are able here to uh, move the upper side and then you fix it with two staples. It's very stable because you have only compressive uh, forces. So uh, this is not a, a, a huge problem. You uh, fix it with two staples and your surgery is done. Then you redrill the, the, the tibial uh, tunnel because the, the, the tunnel has uh, changed uh, a little bit. The goal of this study was to show and to uh, see if this osteotomy was protecting the, the graft. And um, we did uh, this study with a four years um, follow-up. The results are pretty uh, good. Of course, it's not exactly as a primary uh, ACL, but uh, the, uh, the, the return to sport was uh, not too bad. In terms of correction, anatomical correction, we moved from um, uh, a tibial slope of 13 degrees to a, 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 an average of 4 degrees and in terms of laxity we corrected 
very well the laxity. Uh, we went from 10 millimeters side to side to four. So uh, e uh, even with patient with uh, with uh, some meniscus, uh, tr uh, um, uh, some me meniscectomy. So in conclusion, what we can say is that you need to screen your patient, do X-rays, monopodal weight bearing, long-standing X-rays use the laximetry, it's so important, and then uh, you will be able to maybe correct the tibial slope and maybe correct the uh, axial alignment. So uh, make an accurate pre-operative diagnosis. This is a key to be successful. Thank you. Obrigado.